down. Or it's lights out. Zeros on the debit, baby. All I do is swipe now. Gucci sweat a five thousand. Running, buzzing. I be going up, no ceiling. Wow, falling, running. Getting to the paper, I'm peeling out. They gon' know me as legendary. You in the stands, I ain't need no commentary. They gon' know me as legendary. You in the stands, I ain't need no commentary. Ain't no option, ain't no secondary. Yeah, I just throw it out like a hail mary. Welcome back to the CDL and on his desk. I'm your host, Veli, breaking it down with Ali and also Nameless. And the Green Wall are going to be facing off against Toronto Ultra. And um, Big Bar Brick, they're trying to build something special. But and in this matchup right here, I'm like Toronto has what it takes to knock that wall right back down. They absolutely do. Must win for Optic Texas. Going yeah. up against the Toronto Ultra team that now has Cami back in the lineup. A Toronto Ultra team that has not lost a control. This team has been playing Ooh. lights out and they got a 3-0 over Florida. The Muneers team has been playing a lot of teams close and they threw them with a substitute player. So, like, Toronto Ultra are forced to be reckoned with in this league. I fully expect this team to be on top form in this match. Yes, and in this matchup right here, <laughs> Optic Texas, they're going to have to bring it individually. We know what they take. You know, they knew we know that they have what it takes. Excuse yeah. me. But Toronto Ultra, they're going to test your teamwork. And in order for Toronto to beat Optic Texas, what are going to be the game field keys of victory? Well, winning in spite of negative slaying their first and map win percentage despite being 10th in KD, and that's just the teamwork shining, baby. And Cammy needs to get going in SD. He has a .50 in KD this season. He's been struggling with those snipes specifically. I actually have that stat line written down that he was 0-6 on one point on a Tuscan where he has that field over his control. So maybe step it up a little bit today and of course execute offensively with the bomb in SD. Last in plant percentage, eighth in post plant win percentage. So it's really just their s &D that they need to focus up on when it comes against Optic Texas. All right, and take a look at the roster right now. Just a reminder, last time this team was on screen, Cammy was out for Hixie. Hixie was a sub, and the man popped off. He had a little highlight reel at the end of the day, and it was beautiful, right? But with Cammy back in the mix, oh, my man, he had a week off, and I think he's going to come back better than ever for that search and destroy to up that stat percentage right there. But Toronto Ultra, they're facing off against Optic Texas and Alley when it comes to this team. Yeah, they got a victory last time around. It wasn't just one of the best teams out there, right? But um, right now, they can really show us if they really progress. Absolutely. And you know what? For Optic, it's just been about little mistakes, right, that they've been trying to tune up on. We talked about earlier that Scum said they've been struggling a little bit when it comes to the IGL. And hopefully, they have fixed that coming into today. And of course, it depends on a lot of breaks for this squad. So I'm looking for some serious early rotations and some op opening offensive wins when it comes to Search and Destroy. Interesting snap for me, though, was that she had too many it's in hill time versus Paris. That is their main AR right now. So you know what? If it's working for them, sure. But going up against a team like Toronto Ultra, I don't know if that's going to play in their favor. All right. When it comes to the game field kicks and victory, nameless. What you got for us today? Yeah. Hard point fundamentals are important versus another elite respawn team. You got Optic Texas three and two in that game mode, and you got Toronto Ultra that's three and one. So Optic's number two in hold percentage. So clearly, when they set up, they do a damn good job at holding the hard point. Win the battle of Tus Tuscan control. Toronto's two and zero. Oh, also undefeated in control overall. They've been a great control team throughout you know, the formation of this roster, but Optic's 2-1 on that map mode combination. And what we saw to Optic, the different looks, going over and getting B in the first couple of seconds of that round, that was beautiful. They're great on offense on that map. They have to take advantage and take that map in the series. And then also take advantage of Toronto's slow start in search and destroy this yes. season. Toronto's 10th in round win percentage. Now, Toronto's not going to remain a bad search team for long. So Optic going to have to strike now and try to get that search win because Toronto is 2-2 two two in S&D. So it's statistically their worst game mode, and Optic looked better in that last match. So this is a big right. opportunity for them to go ahead and take this series. Did well in the videos. And one of the talks that we've had on this desk is how we expect Optic to just really step it up and search and destroy and start, you know, clapping these teams, right? But it's time for pick -ems. And starting with you, Ali, okay? Um, looking at me with those big eyes. You're looking happy about this right now. Are you feeling happy about who you think will win this match between Optic and Toronto. Man, it is going to be a really close one. I think we're definitely going to end up going to a game five, but okay. I'm favoring Toronto going into this. The fact that they beat Florida with Hixie subbed in, dude, they're looking gross. Wait, what's the map count? 
Three two. Three two. I like that. Nameless. What you got? Yeah, I'm actually going three two. Toronto as well. I think they're gonna take it in game five. I feel like Optic did progress and get a lot better, but in the end, teamwork will take the victory. All right. You know what? I'm gonna be completely honest. Like seeing how Optic struggled earlier this year, I, I started to lose hope a little bit. But you know, with that last win, I'm hoping that Scump and the boys got a little bit of momentum behind them and they can pull out this victory. I think this is gonna be a three two as well. And in order for it to happen that way, Optic has to win that search and destroy. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to throw this over to my boys, my and chance you guys have another great game feel free to take it away thank you very much everyone guys on the desk i was going to say this out loud but like all of you saying that the predictions are in three one three twos mostly i mean i i heard some rumors chance about this i'm not sure if i'm going to do this right but folks were saying wait who's playing today is hixie playing probably a three one <laughs> is cammy playing it's probably going to be a three oh we will see though man because this is going to be a big one the main story here though chance the guys who touch point the desk this is getting to the danger zone for Optic Texas. They don't want to start in lower bracket going to their own major at all. I, look, and I'll take it a step further compared to like the, the losers bracket. Whether optics, any direction optics starts, like I, I think they are a team that is good enough that they are capable of making the losers bracket run. But now the thing is for Toronto, if you just get bullied out and like don't have a good performance in this series, like how much confidence could you even like have going in? Like if you end up playing it incredibly well, win a couple maps and just suffer like a, a tough loss toward the end, it's Toronto. They're a great team. If you play them well and put yourself in a situation where you know you can beat them, Loser's bracket, winner's bracket, you can go into the tournament knowing, like, knowing you're capable. So I just need to see from Optic a competitive match. And hey, I mean, if they get the win, if they dominate 3-0, like even better. And then of course, Toronto, I mean, I think since they picked up Insight, they haven't lost to Optic like a, a single time. As soon as they made that pickup last year, they have been a, a top two team in the game and they have simply not looked back. So they just want to keep that momentum going. Toronto almost consistently a, a nearly perfect team, always special to watch. And, well, we get it going on both cage. Straight into the cage. We're not really going to waste any time getting this game underway, but apparently Ultra with that one sweet second, they're going to pull the quits here and try to find the kills. Vance sliding all around, finding something special here. Start things off, Cammy. Welcome back. He was uh, under the weather. Uh, I think last we last few days didn't manage to make it in. Of course, we've got a lovely, exciting Damien from Hixie, but for now, flying around Bocage indeed. At least we're going to end that two spree there of Kleenex. Chance so far was doing all right, mate. Not a bad look either way. Off to a little bit of map control. 25 seconds out. Bounce can't get a lick of a kill there, and Italy just keeps on flying. Italy is absolutely one of the players to watch in this matchup, right? I think last time, right before we casted Bocage, we were like, this is the man that needs to step up for the team. And then he went with like a 2.0 KD on this map. It was absolutely lights out. So if he can just keep that going on this map, Optic will certainly be in a good spot. There's the third for him, but unfortunately he is completely by himself. He will be hunted down and Toronto will secure that rotation. Not a lot of points on P1 as is typical. Now the battle, just to try to get any sort of time. You get Bruce posted up on the tank and maybe try to laser beam Ooh. a couple of these players down, but it is scrappiness right now around this hard point. Super scrappy indeed. That seems to be the name of the game when it comes to Bokaj. We're gonna to try to eliminate Mixie from our vocabularies in this series, friends. And so far, Shotzi at two and three, looking to find those cutoff plays. There it is, the first going straight to the point. Takes care of one, Scump's gonna get Kleenex. Scump's got the point. Optic now, well, okay, they were there for a brief second, but that's just the way it is in Bokaj. Chaos incarnate. Now it is the fight, honestly, just to get these players out of the hill. I think Italy, that's going to be his goal. Can't win the gunfight. And this is honestly plenty of clearance on the map. Scump trying to make that last ditch effort and successful for a moment. Shots is there as well. A couple trades maybe to take away a few points. And honestly, fights like that are incredibly typical. But that is still, in the end, a stronghold for Ultra. As right now, it is actually Kleenex leading the charge as far as the kills column goes. Rotation anew, obviously Illy, he is worried about that back flank. They weren't able to get a single AR posted up, so the pressure just coming from the left. A couple players get taken down, and well, there is no one stable, no one secure in Toronto. Eventually, flip those spots. They do, they're on the right-hand side of the map now. Optic with control, time starting to tick their way a little bit. Big Bruce can't quite get it done against Bance. Now through the pantry. The kill's starting to come through. Bance over the top side now, trying to flush Scump out the back. That's going to be a big kill. Can he lands two? Whoa, baby. The pressure now is starting to mount. As we continue the onslaught here inside bottom grandmas. Dashy with the top gate position. Huge shots there in insight. Bance has managed to slip the net. He will escape for now. But Optic still accruing the time here on grandmas. Chance 20 seconds out. And Bance is trying to get his way out of this one and get over to next. 
Well, nice little back and forth game, right? Scrapping is over towards the uh, Grandma's Hill. Toronto do a nice job to get the spawns and break through for just a little bit, but obviously Optic have now taken over the lead. Towards Barn we go. Shotzi, the first one, is striking. He should be able to heal up towards the back. He's trying to get hunted down by Toronto, who eventually do, but he's bought his teammates' sides. The trades are in and rotation won by Optic. They'll maintain that lead for the moment as honestly the kill is really starting to fall their way. Yeah, still going. Kleenex 9 and 10. Can't quite make it 9 and... Well, can't make it 10 and 10. So the kill's now come funny. End. But a now flying his way through tank side of the map. Not an easy hard point to break into. There are 14,500 entries here into Barn. Vance has picked the right one. He's in. Can he find kills? No. Shotzi. Head on a swivel. Find a few more. Whoa! Illy gets another one. As Optic Texas with lead in hand oh, now. There's no. 30 seconds left on Barn, baby. They're frying. That's the, the full farm man wipe as well. So this is going to be a decent chunk of time going their way. And we talked about this the last time we casted Optic. A lot of these hills for these guys could be scrappy. River is where they shine. Now, they haven't gotten that rotation yet, but with 10 seconds left, you see for Optic, three players trying to flood through the back. They're winning the gunfights initially. And I think, honestly, on the flip side, Insight might have to be the guy to be sort of the hero for the team. Looks like Dashi and Skump get taken down. And Shotzi, he might be on a four and thinking about the streaks. But certainly for the moment, it is a 50-point deficit. But Toronto, they get to this hill first. They get to the hill first, but I'd love to now go for a listening with Optic Texas and hear how they break. Yeah, we should go for monitor as well, guys. Trust. Yeah. Man, never time. I'm going for monitor. I'm on water. I'm on water. I don't Yo, you pitch water, pitch water. Yo, water got me. He's still there. I got him, too. He's still water, still water. Go, 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 go. Shit out there, shit. Let's go. Go, go through time. Go B-Hop as well. Watch over him. Yeah, deep go ahead, deep ahead, deep ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Deep, I'm not telling me at all. I uh, should real. Where's he? What's up? What's up? What's up? I got one. Another guy on time, the left, and one out. Right. There's well, a last hit. On time and out. I'm time and out? Okay. Go for it. Yeah, L inside, L inside. Where's up? Top. I need time. Where's up? Last guy, last guy. Yeah, I. I Davies Mitchell, he went bottom house. I'm there, you go. I'll see bottom house. Put him on game. Yeah. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I'm picking up left. I'm picking up left. I sent him a left in there. I'm holding. Yo, I have water. I have water. Yo, I got one. Hold water. Hold water. Hold water. I can get some. Top, top, top house. Top house on me. Yeah, yeah. Top house, man. Oh, yeah, he got me. He got me. On time, he's, he's, on time okay. inside her. Oh, he's getting really hurt, guys. He's just holding. Get back, get back, 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 Let's go in. Top one, top one, dead. The more I pick up, bigger in your head. I have back one, I have back one. He went inside one. I don't know where he went. There's really one spawn. Are yeah, you? Yeah. I'm in the back. Oh, in the back, yo, two in the back. Two back, Just keep soaking. Get, get barn control, stay alive. Yo, what's back? Yo, big door barn, big door barn. Big door barn. I think yeah, he's on top. Okay. Yo, 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 get Probably you. Well. Where he's do you go? You chase you. On us, on us, guys. You might pick top. That was him. Huh? He's dead, he's dead. Yo, one guy's still hot. Yo, uh, Bance is right. Bance is right. He's like pushed up a plot or some shit. Yeah, I'm on top. I'm on top. I'm on I'm going to go back, go back, go back, guys. Yeah, I hear that. Ultra, bring it back slowly but surely. Now, we couldn't hear Skump, but we can guarantee his teammates could. Slight bit of an error there, but the squad still chance. Sounded fine overall. One of the biggest concerns they had coming into this was leadership. Sounds like Illy's at the reins now. I mean, he's making good calls as well, like over towards that River Hill. Again, one normally successful for Optic. He made the call, like, trust me, just go through Riverside. And if it wasn't for Insight going on a five spree and being the anchor for the team, they would have had the break. But I think Insight really was the key to start this comeback oh my for Ultra. And he's still down by 30. Kleenex able to pick up two, and honestly, that should be enough just to get the clearance. The next one falls, and Shotzi, the last man up, is right now P2 is where Ultra have almost had their most success. It has been this hill and River Hill where they've been able to fight back everywhere else, though Optic has had their number. We go towards Grandma's, another hill that's been successful for Optic. Kleenex, well, the stun connects. He's still able to find one and oh, able to get alive towards the back, and he will be a constant problem Ooh, for Optic uh, as him and Vance take care uh, of business, secure the spawn, secure the rotation in Ultra. They're 20 points down, but they get to Grandma's first. They get to Grandma's first. Cammy's first line of defense. Stun gets through. Doesn't make much of it. Kleenex now trying to hit the sides. Good tags. Damage is in. Bant's going to clear him up. Does get at least one scum last fell left now for Optic and Kleenex guns oh, him. Yeah. That's four in a row. That's hard point ultra. Oh, and he spots out Shotzi as well on the wrap. He's looking in that for Dashi. He gets the next one and he can call out to his teammates. They're flooding up the right side. And even if they don't, they push the hill. His teammates are ready. It, it, everyone getting kills for Toronto. 
Still maybe a, a little bit scrappy towards the end, but your roaming slayer is yeah. there. He picks up two. He picks up Yo. full streaks to Toronto. They pick up the lead. Tobias Juliansson. There's one more, dude. Oh, my God. He's being gifted right now. Blessings from the card gods, indeed. Your boy's on a nine here on the cage. We don't see streaks like this. And ten, there it is. Oh, my God. That was a stupid run. Flying Dutchman, indeed. I mean, take a breath and try to regain a run like that. It's tough to bounce back from, especially because it's not just Kleenex, right? Dance is on a four. He's also got 26 kills. The SMGs for Ultra have truly turned up. There's the kill on the flank. That's a five. And keep in mind, Kleenex already has that glide. You might have another lead exchange over towards Barn. It's certainly close to a tie game, but this is where the Swarm advanced. The last one in the hill he gets taken care of is Shotzi picks up two. Optic now takes the lead as Bocage is a back and forth bloodbath of a map. <laughs> These teams right now just trading blows. Every kill is so intense. It's incredibly difficult to keep this pace up for both squads, though. Optic with a slight lead now, looking to push it that bit further as we are getting a spicy one here, friends. Final 10 seconds coming to a close and the hunt is on. Dashi being the hunted Kleenex, certainly the hunter as he finds another, adds it to that tremendous pile of kills. He's already amassed thus far here on this Bocage hardpoint. Shotzi, movement on fleet, looking good so far as well. Kills going through, ultra with a hardpoint time now. Scum on the offensive. Gotta watch out for insight in the back, Heady. This was a difficult hardpoint for Optic to break previously, Chance, and they're gonna do what they can this time round, and it's Big Bruce leading the charge. Well, at least inside gets taken care of this time, so maybe a, a little bit more of an opening. But now you got Bants on flanks, and Bants finds one. You got Shotzi trying to push up and cause problems for them, but it's still Ultra well near the hill, but not inside of it. Optic at least keeping Ultra out of the point, so they can keep the lead by the smallest of margins that they actually have. And, well, Optic actually able to get inside this time around. They have fought through the spawns. They have made amends for that first rotation that they had, and at least getting that glide bomb out of the way. Two players oh, oh. But it's the team kill on Bands. Still, though, you got the clearance. Cammy's there. He wins the gunfight in Ultra. Well, it might be the team kill, but they're able to get back inside the point, at least for a few moments. But I will say, Optic, that is job absolutely well done on River. They maintain that 30-point lead. Going through the streaks, managed to keep the time flowing, no problem whatsoever. Back towards the center of the map we go. Third set, less than a minute remaining on the in-game clock. And here we go, friends. Both teams are going to line this one up. Bance and Kami with the opening kills. Bance can't take care of Shotzi. He is such a difficult kill here on the map. But Kleenex has his number. Forward it goes. The oh, final dear. snap. The bullets are in. 40 seconds left on the point. Ultra still trying to claw their way back into this one. As Kleenex continues to do unspeakable things in this game. Uh, his PVO, POV is almost magical at times. 37 kills for him. And honestly, again, leading the lobby. Shotzi's doing his best just to keep up. But as it stands, what, 22 seconds left on Ooh. this hill? Optic currently. You see how much pressure they have over towards Bond just to be concerned about that next rotation. Hey, They're so secure about the back, always watching the flank, and they get those spawns. And keep in mind for the game clock, this game will end on that game clock. So you have to manage so many things for these players. And obviously, Optic, they can play around it. That is a four-man wipe. That is a rotation that they win. I'd say for P2, get in the point, collect the time. But after that, maybe leave it out. Or they're just doing it already. Ten seconds left to go on the game. They're doing what exactly did the Paris. Five seconds now. No one from Ultra close by. Gotta fly. Gotta go. Gotta go. It's not gonna happen. Scum's there to stop him. No one gets close. Oh, wow. Wow. What an opener. Optic Texas take it to Ultra there on Bocage. And but do they had them out slayed from the start? If not for Kleenex going absolute Thor mode and just swinging at Mjolnir around, I don't know what we would have seen there, man. That could have been a lot like a further apart game in terms of the score disparity. We definitely don't go to game clock. Woo, what a banger to get things going. And it's not just him, it's also inside again on that River Hill just to keep things close. But realistically, outside of that, you're exactly right. Just consistent pressure from Optic, the breaks when they need them. And honestly, probably some of the better holds we've seen consistently uh, on any given hill. And I got to say, that is incredibly impressive to be like that heads up in game. I even had the access to look at the game clock. I thought they were still like 20 plus seconds on the P2. I'm thinking Money Hill grabbed the time there, but I think more heads up than I am when I have the advantage and making those big brain calls towards the end. Shotzi kept up with Kleenex and then some ended up leading the lobby in terms of slaying and I mean, hey, it might have only been a 13-point game, but that is almost a, a clinical performance from Optic. No mistakes made. And they do the same thing as they did to Paris. They run the clock down. The contest is so, so on point. Peep the highlights, friends. This was a rager.
What a map one. We try to keep things chill, you know? We try to ease you into a series, you know? I know the Optic fans are obviously watching this one, Toronto Ultra fans as well, but it's hard to ease in to a map like that, man. What a start. Both teams looking extremely well matched. Optic with a special source though indeed. Great kills out of bands. The run from Kleenex was something else. He was just doing laps. Not an easy thing to do on Bocage whatsoever. This was six spree at this point in time. Finds himself number seven. And from here on out, I mean, there were some huge individual wins and he's taking these fights head on as well. Gifted the ninth, the 10th out in mid map somewhere. Crazy stuff, John. And I think Bokaj is officially going to become just like the, the square up map, right? Like there's a few teams where if you let it through, Optic is one of them, FaZe is one of them, Toronto obviously right there in the mix. It is just like, who's ready for the gunfights? Who's ready to have that energy <laughs> at 10 nonstop? And well, I think Optic has an incredibly uh, good track record on this map so far. And that is quite the way to start off the series too, because that is stressful. When you have a loss like that on Bokaj, that is a lot of energy sort of uh, expended uh, as well. So kicking off the series, that is the type of map that Optic needs. Well, there we go. After that uh, rager on Bocage, we're gonna, we all need a break. We all need a vacation. So why don't we go to Italy? Why don't we go to Tuscan and spend a couple of nights there? We'll do search and destroy. We'll do control. We'll see how things are going. After that, who knows? Maybe we'll go to Gavutu. Hey, it could be great. Man alive. I don't know about you friends, but I'm a little bit, I'm, a, I'm feeling it after that one, Chance. That was a, a very, very exciting start to the series. Search and destroy, though, mate, now Tuscan. Uh, it has been the woes of Optic, and we look at the history of this team together, these two teams together. Uh, I mean, it's been close, right? It's been real close between both squads coming across the Cold War season. Of course, Game 5 against Ultra was literally the bane of Optic for many events, many, many events. True heartbreak. How are we feeling coming into this one? Well, I would say both of these teams sort of have, like, I, what was might be too extreme, but certainly things that they want to get better in the search and destroy, right? Maybe round 11 woes for Optic is absolutely true, but they've still been playmakers at SD. They've still been playmakers in the round 11s. Maybe a few unfortunate moments here or there, but still a solid SD team, but they want to crank it up. The same can be said for Toronto Ultra, by the way. I think Camby right now has like a pretty abysmal KD overall for search and destroy. So he's an individual you're looking to, to step things up, but Ultra, as great as their teamwork has been, their SD certainly not quite up to like uh, what we expect of them in the game mode. So I think this is a map too, where even by the time major one comes around, these teams will be making the adjustments, making the improvements. And it'll certainly be fun to see exactly where they stand now. I know Cami, uh, at least in the kickoff classic, was certainly putting on a show with the sniper rifle on this map. Very interested to see if he can be consistent with that or if Dashi or Illy tries to go for the counters, try to delivers, but I'm looking for the creative strats. I'm looking for the good play calls. I'm looking for those quick adjustments. I think honestly with these two teams, it has a, a round 11 written all over it. it. I hope so, I really do. Tuscan search and destroy now map number two. We roll into this one. And again, Ali brought this up on the uh, on the desk when it comes to snipes for Cami. Since kickoff, he's not been all that. He really hasn't. Again, he's been under the weather and I'm gonna say it, I think he's a handsome devil. I think he's a beautiful man. I think he's Edinburgh's Wolverine right now with the beard he's got going on. But he does look tired. It has to be said. He does look like he's uh, certainly not fighting fit. And after that last performance, maybe not match fit as well, but we'll see. This is uh, a, a very, very strong test. Ultra, of course, have had the success coming into this. They should be sitting pretty Ooh. in that winner's But You caught something there with your eye chance. Quick, before the round starts. I, I forgot about this. Optic, their biggest thorn in their side is first blood percentage. I think they are either the best or second best team in the game of winning the four B3s when they get the first bloods, but they have the worst overall actual first blood percentage. So. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Well, Shotzi connects with the first blood. And I think, honestly, if you get this bomb planted A, unless Kleenex gets this guy off bomb, Optic are feeling great about this round. Yeah, they're still starting things off with that first blood. And here we go, the capitalize. He's just chilling on bomb. Scumpy's going to hold that one down. And he's got his coverage as well, just in case any shenanigans. But here comes Kleenex. So sneaky. Scump with a nice nade. Little unfortunate angle there. Doesn't land it. Doesn't even damage Kleenex. But the intent was good. But Kleenex could be the decider here, Chance, in this round. Yeah, and Shotzi got back down with a grenade, so I think that's the play that Optic are just going to be waiting to make. Maybe when number one Dashi comes to look over, Shotzi, I'm expecting to try to get Kleenex out of this corner. And Skump might peek at the exact same time. you got to be coordinated. I see Skump with the bomb. He's leaning towards it. You're going to have to be on point. Kleenex is making his move. Shotzi wins the gunfight 4v2. Dashi's got the overall coverage now from up top. Shotzi's managed to sneak into the corner. How catches a cami. Clock's ticking. Bomb's going to be planted in sight. This is going to be a tough one. 1v3. It's going to be... Oh! Beans. Jiminy Crickets!
I'll take get the round. Yeah, MP40 players stay blessed. That has been my experience <laughs> ranked, but just a, a good gunfight. Two HP is all Scump needs, but again, that round comes down to basically just Shotzi. One for the first blood he gets on Bant, and again, they spotted out Kleenex over in that little corner underneath Church. Scump is over there hitting with stuns. As long as you make sure you're coordinated, have good timing, and take care of him, well, and it's a free bomb plant and an easy round for Optic after the fact, so... They get that first blood, they win the round. Now Toronto's turn to attack. Two H Pizzle for Shizzle, here we go. Cami's up. In sight, through mid, and Mark, it's, it's, I mean, it is World War II. It's just explosions everywhere. Non-stop, Shotzi eats it. Two HP again. And oh my God, Kleenex has no idea. Did he hear the door open blow him? He may have. No, he didn't. Scump's got him. He's got him dead to rights if he pushes through that window. Well, I don't think Linux is so oh, no, no Linux pushes. Wow. Yeah, set the trap and just pounce. You get the first blood, but keep in mind that bomb is down on A. This is not an easy retake at all. Scump right now with number three Shotzi. They gotta make plays. Shotzi knows that this is where Bance is gonna be. We've seen this time and time again from teams. Is he gonna check it? No, Benjamin Bance tucks himself away in the corner. It's an easy kill. Scump now trying to find the retribution. 2v2. Bance in sight. Dashy scum. Bance wins it. Dashy's last one left up. 15 seconds looking towards the bomb. Insight is in the premium position to stop it. And Bance is there as the insurance policy. This should be Ultra's round. A kill though from Dashy. Gee, what the? That rat is ridiculous, dude. We'll take the kill. Watch out for that bomb. There we go. What? Dashy is so strong. I just, he's been working out in the gym. My man. On the regular. He's man. not late to anything these days. Oh my God. He just sat on that thing. Look how cool he looked with the fire behind him. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, I will say a little bit weird just to sort of give away that kill. Maybe not the worst thing. Honestly, I suppose you do want offense for the round 11. So maybe not the worst idea unless insight turns that into streaks. But uh, yeah, that round literally just comes down to Bance, right? Shotzi doesn't check that deep angle. And even the gunfight Bance had against Scump, he got reduced to one HP. But for Bance, that's all he needs. Go again. Top church now. Eyes are all over that mid-map position from inside. Cammy alongside him. Bit of a firing squad from that high ground position. And once again, you got someone in mid-map. Oh dear, advance is tagged. Shotzi now moving in for the kill. Here he comes. Heads up play from Bansy. Gonna make him really work for it. There's the teamwork, the coordinated effort, the nades, the tags from Shotzi. Kleenex looking for the... Oh, wow! <laughs> okay, hey. that's the round. Optic looking very strong. Yeah, I mean, movement like that from Shotzi, it's illegal in 37 states, but not Texas. They're a little bit more lax about those types of things, and I see no restrictions from Canada. So, yeah, that'll be it. That'll win you the round. It is almost the exact same situation, right? There is one man for Toronto that can stop that bomb plant. Shotzi is responsible for dealing with him on top of the flank through P5, and, well, Shotzi absolutely delivers. There's now three offensive rounds in a row. Again, you saw the stat earlier. I think it's 51% for offense, 49 for defense, but... Offense have been stronger in this map so far. Toronto, they love this quick bomb plant. Shotzi doesn't want to see it again. He is in between the setup and he gets blooded. Cammy catches him with the headshot. Scum's trying to sneak through mid. Nothing sneaky about it. He gets viscerated and ultra bounce back. Decisive round right off the rip of that Cammy first blood. Here we go, team. Everyone have a quick swig back into it. Another round of search and destroy to be had. Yeah, and really, it all comes down to Cammy, right? Because Shotzi actually did find just, I don't know, unbelievable timing to get in between the entire setup. But Shotzi wins that gunfight. Optic wins the round. Cammy on the heady, ready for it. Seals the deal. First Bloods still reign supreme. And I think for Optic, almost no reason to mix it up. No reason for either team on offense to mix up the strats until they get punished on defense. Nowhere to go. Shots, by the way, dominating the middle of the map already. I mean, you could plant the bomb for free, and you could just get this down so quickly. And there you go. First bloods for the nades. Second oh. bloods for the nades. The comms and nades and coordination on point. 4v2 lineup for Ilya. Oh. There you go. Hey. Perfection of a fifth round for Optic. It does not get better than that. Everything, everything's going right. Everything's lining up, literally. That's a massive round from Texas.
Whether it's a sweet peachy nays, the two of them coordinated very well. Ilya atop top that god heady, absolutely ripping ultra. Can't seem to catch a break. Captain Bance now low left of your screen. He's starting to give the boys some orders, trying to get them out of this slight deficit. As again, there's a lot of frowns on that side of the screen. They're only down by one round. Oh Any my god, and look at that spree. call too, by the way. Dude, uh, Optic are quad stacking A because that's in their problem. Giving up the bomb plant over towards A, not being able to take it. But they just chucked enough stuns and hit nothing. So I think they're expecting the four man like flood through B, which I thought Toronto was going for. Instead, Toronto might have just manipulated. Uh, this A site is now wide open, whether or not they know it. Toronto, this might be playing with their food. Oh, chewing away. Benjamin Bands can't get scump as well, but here comes Kleenex on the trade. Chelsea gets involved as well. Now it's a 2v2 on what a weird round this has been. Chelsea on the wrap. They've got the bomb down on the outside of Church. That is a massive, massive moment now. Bronto Ultra still have to go grab that one. Kleenex wins a big one. Illy now in the 1v2. And he does have the bomb down. That's the good news. The bad news is he might not know this. And Ultra, by the way, sticking together. He will hear when this bomb gets picked up, and that'll give him the intel. He should know that they were around Church and... You know he's cleared out A. Got to check B Billy, quick. Here he goes. Guns one. 1v1. Oh my god. Illy's so hurt. He's got one HP. But look at Kleenex. Immediate reposition. He makes the read. Oh, he here comes the fight. Illy gets it. Perfect. Five in a row. Perfect play. He went from one HP to winning the round. What a great search this is. And the first one on defense, too. That round right there might be the difference maker. I mean, it was wild how it started off in the opening, right? It was a, an interesting counter for Optic, again, who were trying to adjust those A plants or address the A plants, excuse me, early. Turns out for Toronto, nobody home. But instead of going towards B, they had a, a wild situation. Ailey clutches the 1v2. That is what he's here for. And whether or not he heard Kleenex up top or just made the perfect reader, saw the edge of him. Illy delivers to give Optic that advantage. And honestly, five spree for him right now. Maybe think about some streaks. By the way, the full stack for Toronto. Yeah, get out of dodge. Turn and run. As now, by the way, Shotzi on the flip side. He's over there clearing out B. It interesting the way these past two rounds have played. This map has looked wild. Yeah, this is a strange one indeed. Oh my god, Shotzi, did he see? Oh, he saw him, he saw him! Shotzi, oh, he can't finish the kill. Billy got a shot in. Shotzi could be a dead man now. Good comms. Trades, though, are bound. You may lose Shotzi. For Texas, but Ultra lose Cami as well in that engagement. At least still on his spree. On being planted by B now. Oh, Bans is heavily tagged. He can't get out of that corner. He needs a teammate to come bail him out. There it is. Illy almost full streaks to be had. Big stuff out of Dashy on the flank. It's a 1v1. It's Dashy versus Insight. It's main AR on main AR. And there's 30 seconds to get it done. Dashy on the heady. Texas do it again here in the search. I, and I respect the square up from uh, Insight in that situation. But yeah, Dashy posted up on a heady. He got reduced to 13 HP, but that is one of the more difficult gunfights you could ever try to win. And that is just the clutch. That is Dashy reading the flank through P5, catching the, the one man for Toronto that could have won then that round. Back-to-back -back clutch plays. One from Millie, one from Dashy. Taking care of business. 5-2 lead. Just got to clutch up on defense once again. Again, the quad stack over by A. Beams. Beams. Whoa. More beams. 3v2. Ultra on the back foot here. And Kleenex. If I won. Kleenex trying to stay alive in this tough spot. Snaps are on point. Insight now. Last player left alive. He's going to do a bit of a reshuffle here. But there's time to get this done. Ilian Shotzi on the defense. The bomb is down over by A. Insight is hoping for a pick here, hoping for a kill. Oh, and he may get it. Oh my god, chance I can't watch. Every corner possible. Oh my god. Oh my god, he, he danced around them. They didn't see him. Well, yeah, and, and so now the situation, he'll be able to pick up this bomb with about 30 seconds left in the round. I don't even know if Optic will have any idea of where he's actually picking it up from, but they're going to have options just to, to clear out both bomb sites. 25 seconds left, and Optic not even making the move. They might just be giving up the bomb plant for free and trusting the 2v1 retake. Whatever the case may be, Insight is running out of time, and now Optic are starting to adjust. Here they come. Shotzi's going to hit him right through the front. Time is going to be bad for this one. Insight, if you turn around, Sad, I'm telling you, 
That might be a kill for you, but this round may come down to a strange situation indeed. Shotzi positions himself perfectly. And wow, Optic Texas search has been a bit of a woe for them. And there was some talks of Dashi spending late nights at the Hex Quarters working on theories in his mind, strats, post plant positions, you name it. Let me tell you, it all paid off there. Texas go up 0-2. I, dude, in Optic fans, they better be satisfied with that performance. I mean, 6-2, 6-3, whatever it just was, dominant 6-2. There you go. Making play calls. Illy getting the 1v2 clutch. Dashi making the reads to also deliver in the 2v2 clutch. Running together as a team, making no mistakes. The coordination of the nades. When Dashi is like challenging Cami on the heady, even when he falls, you got the nade there to make sure you finish the kill to keep the man advantage. Couple rounds before that, it's a nade from Illy and a nade from Skump that connects and gives you those first two bloods. I mean, that is as good as you could possibly expect a Search and Destroy to ever go against Toronto Ultra. Honestly, as far as individual team performances go, one of the best S&Ds we have seen this year. Unbelievable stuff. That's one we're going to be talking about for a little bit of time, but there's a lot of chatter on social media about all sorts. We'll get a bit of that later. We're going to leave that one in the hands of Detective Nameless when we get to the end of this series. But, but, but Charles, this series is uh, it's flying by. I'm very surprised. Last match of the day here, and I'm I want to say shocked more than anything so far. I thought it was going to be a lot more closer matchup, closer series, but alas, one of our Tuscans is done. Tuscan Control coming up after this break. Will this be the end of Toronto Ultra here? Of Optic Texas managed to find that special source. Find out after the break.
Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by TeamSpeak, the official broadcast communication partner of the Call of Duty League. And there we go, friends. We're up 2-0 in the series for Optic Texas and uh, Ultra Chance. They are staring down the barrel of a defeat. Is that accurate? Oh, control specifically. Okay, 29.4% of the kills in control for Scump. That is compared to his teammates. Obviously, the average would be 25%. That is, you know, one out of four. So Scump lights it up in control. That is pretty absurd. And on top of that, 1.15 KD while he's rocking the SMG. I mean, that means two things. One, they play a lot of Tuscan. And two, Scump has been the fry man. And well, whether or not he is full in color, he is certainly ready to play on the day. Optic up 2-0. And... I would say a couple reasons why. Honestly, for Shotzi, I'm not exactly sure what his fate will be, but right now he's looking like a menace. He's really been impressive, Chance. I mean, how many times better than, than probably he, he's looked before? Uh, uh, eight, maybe. I, I mean, he's looking on point. Uh, I know there's a lot of F1 drivers out there, but maybe just the, the eighth version of it. Whatever the case may be, we go into control. Both of these teams have been fantastic on Tuscan and I mean, again, even just look at like the offensive win percentage, right? You have Toronto, who's was above the 50% mark. That is honestly clinically insane. That means they are the best in the world, but Optic being second, not far from it. So this is, again, a square up map. Both of these teams love Tuscan. The battle will be better. Optic looking for the 3-0. Toronto looking for a first sweep as Shotzi well continues his reign of terror. My God, you're good. Here we go. He's slowly being decimated here. First segment on his way out. Kleenex meets Scump in the grass. He's going to get one. Shots are in the back spawn. We're going to be straight away. This is not looking good. Cammy has just gotten to church. He's barely been able to say his prayers. And now he's already, well, nearly, sent back to the afterlife. There we go. Second segment, A on his way out. Kleenex manages to catch a couple of the shots. He scum combo kebabs them, eats them alive. And here we go. Second segment, A cleaned up. At least still got mid map covered. That's a small thing, too, but that's a really good play by Illy just to catch some of these players, and he gets insight to help as well. Just to hop off the point to watch your own back and make sure you maintain that map control. So little things like that from Illy go a long way. It'll be a five-life lead with plenty of time on the clock for Optic to attempt to convert this round. Of course, you got guys like number six, Cammy. He is in the Optic spawn, but the same thing can be said for Optic being in their spawn. Illy behind enemy lines, wins a gunfight top church, and... It will just be chaos on the map for a bit as Cammy finally makes his move. Slowly but surely now, the defenders trying to hold their way back towards that B zone. Kleenex trying to lock it down to the outside here of P5. Crazy little room here on Tuscan where a lot of action goes down. The defenders on the reshuffle. Bounce with a big win. Up close and personal now. Dashy and the rest of the Optic team. They're still making their way forward, but Kleenex is a clean house. Can Scump find any more? The answer is hell no. Ultra fight their way out of their spawn. Now trying to keep the pace alive. Bance is still going. What in the name of all things, Benjamin? I, I mean, look, if you're paying attention on the bone copies, Maz, obviously you were. It was the SMGs for Toronto Ultra that were lighting it up pretty much from start to finish. Kleenex and Bance right now. Yes, they're down 2-0, but might be looking for a, a nice little revenge tour. And, and honestly, this is one of those pushes, by the way, on offense. As soon as any player dies, it makes it so difficult to actually get that break. So once a guy like Shotzi falls, just gonna have to gear up, try to get that map control and get ready for the next push. Illy strikes, stays alive, and now just wait for his teammates as Shotzi takes care of the flight. Nice made over the top, doesn't find anything. Insight. A lot of damage dealt. Can't get the kill oh on a scum. God, what a nice job. That is frustrating as hell. Vance is now up. Big win against Shotzi. Nothing but head there. He cleans him up with the MP40. Now another slide forward. Scum's gonna get tagged. Will stay alive. The dead nade not able to do much. Insight V dashy from these very angles. We've seen it before on this map, and it's been Scum's something special. Going. And Scum's on a three now. Lock this one down. And this is a big stack. It's the optic stack, if you will. Cammy's got to go big. Here comes the final pinch. you got to go. Ultra, fly forward, get the kills. They can't find a single one. Texas Ugh. captures both points. They stack it up again. Uh, and this is Optic. I mean, just running them over. By the way, that is all because of that gunfight that Scump had against Insight that he should not have won. I wasn't joking when I say, if you have one player fall before that push to be ever, like, sort of activates, it is incredibly difficult to make a move. Scump wins that one, turns it into two more, and the man that is hogging the kills in control right now, 9-5 on a force spree.
as you can see the setup for Optic, they don't care about that pressure towards eight. They care about the kills and the kills they get. Scope now one of five. Feels all good for them now. While we have the opportunity, let's go for a very quick listen in with Toronto Ultra and see how they rebound. Up chair, up chair. They, side? they choked it. They could be you. They yeah, could be you. I think. Oh, you, you weak. Absolutely. Their side. Their side. Scum, scum their side. Scum their side. It was top church as well. I don't What's know. It? it might have been scum. scum One stop up broken. I'm playing for him. Scum's the side. Could pinch. Bed. Could pinch Ali. Where is he? I'm in that block. Him. I'm weak. Yeah, you hit me with an aid. Come back to plow. Yeah. They're just playing deep. Wait, wait, let uh, me nade it. Let me nade it. We could have got mid though. Uh, no, he could have. I killed him. I killed him. Okay, okay. And see him. I'm in church. You're in church. Weak dead. Nice shot. Playing deep. Absolute, bro. Oh, we left on the top. Shots, he's top. He's, he's done that ladder. Absolute, absolute, Toby. Round back. Green, oh, green. one's on the deep guard, Heavy. Uh, how are we playing this? John, play, 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 play front. Play front. Okay, okay. Play, play front. Play front. Play front. Oh, he's pushed out. He's pushed oh, out. Yeah, he's already pushed out. Two P5. Two P5. Then. Right up. Pushed out. Shots, he's not, not like the, the ramp. The Dude. ramp. Now, Illy. Illy's top, absolute top broken. One's on the roof somewhere. Close to your left. Yeah, I think he's close. And the bottom left. He's not. He's top broken. Illy. Illy's weak. Top broken. Shotsy. 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 My pin. Gonna be. Dashy. Dashy front. Dashy is front. Jimmy. Top long, dead. One more, MP5. I don't see, I don't see Dashy. I'd have run back. Yeah, Quick. you might have played green. Uh, just come, spin you, P5, just come, spin you. Absolutely. Nice, good shit. Play through the point, Jimmy. Yeah, he's low, low, chill left, Toby. Yeah, he is low, I don't know. On the steps, on the steps. On the steps, on map steps, map steps, map steps, map map steps, kill me. Nice. I'm in mid, he's got mid alley, mid alley, spawn kill him. Chair, scum play for me, top. Scum's top, uh... Scum's in P5. Scum's P5. Yeah. Big kill P5. Yeah, Scum, that's nice. Come here, man. Play one, P5. One top, play top, P5. Top Listen, we need shot. one wave green to stack. Yeah, yeah. Top maps or top green. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna nade front, okay? He's jumped across the green. Nah, yeah. being naded. Fuck. I'm one shot, give me a sec. Close, close, close shotsy. He's close. Weak. Ram. Slide Nade, ma flat. Uh, yeah. yeah, I spawned fucking I think he's top. top he's top. One stop, one stop on me. Close left as well, I think. Go on. I'm pinch him. I'm fucking pushing for it, bro. Good hop. Wait, fucking plat, plat and deep right. Run now, run now. You plat, plat, plat. Yeah, one. nice. Plat. Well, I'm watching pinch until you spawn up. Plat, 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 plat. I think he's pinched. Two, got two. Nice. One deep. Yeah. Ash is deep, absolute. Yeah, like he's top back right, back right, Cam. Play it for a point. Yeah, back right, back right. I'm going to pinch top maps. Nice. Let's, let's do that. Dash, 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 weak, deep right. Oh, I've done it. Let's do this, let's do this. Back right, both of them. Back right, both of them. Pull an AR to help you with maps here. I want plus steps. I'm just, I'm just it. holding uh... a good concerted effort chance there on the final few pushes, but the 13 to 6 Optic Texas have the life lead. They've got the advantage, and right now they've got a gunny as well. I absolutely, they have the gunny. I mean, I love the conversational nature of Toronto's comms, but maybe a couple mishaps, or maybe this could be the play, but it's a 3v10, and these are so difficult gunfights to win. Optic, I mean, cleaning house. Maybe Shotzi's lucky number it is just eight, but. They're setting themselves up for a 3-0. I mean, just a very close game in the hard point, but dominance in the search and destroy and dominance here so far in the control as well. Optic right now are on one. Whew. Not over yet. Joining here, what, you have, uh, what we got of the listening there does give us a lot of, you know, promise and insight, if you will, into Ultra's mindset again. One of the most composed teams in the league by far. But now, this is it. The potential for the 3-0. Four-man stack on the defense in, gone towards A. Shotzi's gonna try to creep through church side. And oh my oh, goodness no. gracious, Shotzi finds one. The instant snap out of the second, and he's out. He's dealt the damage, he's gonna dip. Dash, he's got the pinch picked up. It all comes down to one, and it's all on Akami now in the A zone. Staying alive for the time being. Here comes the counter attack now from Ultra, and they're making this work out. Charles, what an opener this was. Uh, they, they just did this to bully out A on defense. I'm surprised too, because Optic, they've hit mid like plenty of times when they play Tuscan control, but this is the way to respond, by the way. Take it to them on defense. Give them no room to breathe. Scout may be finding an opening, but either way, as it stands, you're up four lives. There has been no progress over towards A. Maybe Ultra, I know the, the comms, or the comms are nice and calm. They have certainly turned up the heat so far on defense, but as soon as they get cleared out, they will slow that pace down. They will take the life advantage that they have and, well, maybe try to add a two more to the pile as can be able to find another pick. Scum trying to hold on. Oh, he does just that. Turn it out by Vance. He keep the A zone safe for a brief moment. Dashi now sliding forward. Good coverage from Illy as well. The dynamic duo now make their way back onto the point. 36 seconds on the clock. Second segment A, fast moving. Again, the optic stack continues to impress and bewilder fans across the world. A 2 2 split now. Over towards B we go, as A is now done. One more minute on the clock. 17 lives for Optic Texas, 18 for Ultra. 
And, and plenty of time to work with. Minute and a Going half. Quite is not as much as they had the first round, but again, they just need that one good push. And they've been able to convert it quite a few times. Illy underneath Church, and he looks like he found the opening. He's able to get through, or maybe no opening there. Kami takes him down. Vance wins the next one, and that is a push completely stuffed for Optic. Scumpy. Scump the next man up, gets traded, and well, Ultra Clearhouse for life advantage now. Honestly, this could be one that comes down to just pure kills. If Optics ever able to stop that clock over towards B, and looks like for the moment their play call try to work through mid and maybe throw a life or two away. Shots he able to take one down. I mean, Ill is here, but he has no help. Nah, not enough help. Now he's done. So Ultra should be able to hold this one down. 15 to 9. Ultra with the life lead. As so many times before, it has come down to kills here on Tuscan and Gavutu in the control game mode here in Vanguard. The five spree, trying to make it a six. Oh, inside, stay alive, Sunny Jim. All good for now, trying to keep the streaks play. Shots he now hitting the backside of the spawn for Toronto Ultra. Inside should be able to read this one. They've got eyes on him. There's the tags, damage, big shots, clean up coming through from Kleenex. Less than 30 seconds on the clock chance and only five lives for Texas. Yeah, I mean, just completely disconnected this round, at least after capturing A. I think, honestly, just the way the Ultra set the tone right off the break to force that A just made things a little bit different that I think never able to quite to make the adjustments for. And even now, you can see they just got dismantled in this round, down by eight lives, and I think they chalked it up and just said, hey, we know if we go to that round five, we need to make sure we get that defense and can't throw away too many lives. But that was a beautiful round, potentially for Ultra to start this comeback. It would be the ultimate reverse sweep if you go down 2-0 in the series and 2-0 down in the control as well, but at least able to get on the board. And now for Ultra, I mean, we saw the stats, right? 57% of their offensive rounds in control, they are able to win the best team in the game from this direction. And this is a round they absolutely need. And keep in mind, inside, by the way, a bit of a slow game because Dashi has been on a heater but he is on a five. He might be able to get some streaks. And what a story it would continue to be. The history that these squads have got against each other in tough situations. Let's add another one to it. Why not? Cami four now in a row. Looking for the fifth. Good shots out of Ellie, but not to stop Cameron McGilligan. Edinburgh's finest now on a five. Toronto with that slow progress towards A. And hello. That's six now for Cami. Looking to keep this play going. One more kill is going to net in the streaks. Some nice shots out of Ellie. The frag grenade helps out too. Now Shotzi straight into the spawn. Inside with a good read though. Nice shots again. Kills coming through. Chance second segment at A though. Gone. Hey, you do see inside got traded by the way. So he's actually not able to get that glide bomb. So big kills coming in from Optic in that moment. They've at least stopped the, the progression over towards A. So... Maybe for Ultra, maybe a bit disconnected in this moment, or maybe opportunity for Kleenex to get some kills or just get shot in the back, unfortunate spawn that he has to deal with. And now I think Optic, they might have the moment. They chalked up A in the past, and well, with that gunfight win, Optic will have to chalk this one up too. Ultra will capture A, have a minute and 53 seconds on the clock, but down two lives, but still plenty of time to work with. They've got nice spread on the defense towards B as well, so Ultra, they're gonna have a very difficult task to get across. Oh no, timing for scum. He let them all in. Ah, the church is full of Canadian players with complicated backgrounds. Some of them from the UK, some of them from Denmark. It's very complicated, but they're all in now. Shots, he's like, ah, they're on me as well. And here they come. Bands now straight on the point. The stack now from Ultra. Insights managing to keep the kills going. Cammy's in the back line as well. Optic, they're in trouble now. Ultra have just sprung the life. Well, they didn't stack it though, right? They only have one or maybe two players on point, but you're watching the back and those are the kills going in the back that are important, by the way. Skelp trying to flank. Bant's able to win his one, but you only got the one tick so far. You still have pressure towards the back, but everything gets dealt with. I think, honestly, as far as we've seen on offense, at least this game, Optic have handled it just a little bit better. But as it stands though, Ultra still a two life lead. Now just make it one and they still have a tick. So not the worst situation in the world, but still not easy to try to convert this round as they are getting picked apart left and right. Got to stagnate, got to wait, got to get that coordinated team push. You can see a little bit of pressure through P5. Ultra, they want to hit through the front. Ultra with the kills as well. They're desperate not to get defense on the final round. They want it, brother. And here comes Scump, not able to get anything out of that fight. Shotzi, oh baby, look at this tight angle. Over the top they go. 
Big play from Shossi, traded out immediately. Once again, here comes the two-man hit from Ultra, and it's a trade. Dashi now should be able to clean up bands. <laughs> Trades again, non-stop. But wait, Insight comes out on top. Eight lives to the nine now. Can Insight find a kill or two here? He will not. Once again, Optics defense reigns supreme. Kleenex finds one before being traded as well. Clock ticking, seven lives apiece. We're going down to the wire. Look, man, if you can beat Ultra, you can win tournaments. That is what Optic is looking to set themselves up for right now. That last boost of confidence before going into this major and looking to get it done in 3-0 fashion. All four plays for Ultra stacked up their final play. Final play, here we go. In every possible corner, Cammy's bullets go. Scub cut down to the back, no lives left now for Ultra. Two of them dead on the point, and you're still trying to maintain some presence here, and it's on Illy. The clock's still flowing. Here comes the last minute contest. Bans waiting patiently, the last player now for his squad. Desperately hoping to find something. Here come the reinforcements. Clock still taking Bans over the top rope. He gets dropped, Illy now, brought down by Insight. There's the contest, Shotzi still alive, and it is absolutely non-stop here on the point. Cammy trying to find something, can't get it done. Insight's all alone, and that is it. Anthony Cuevas Castro with a final kill, and my goodness, Optic Texas, a 3-0 over Toronto Ultra. I, and look, man, it didn't come out with a, a little bit of drama along the way, but still, that is the performance Optic needs. That is a match they needed to dominate. And again, I think that is the first time these Optic boys have beaten uh, Toronto since they have picked up Insight. It has been a very interesting start to the season about the clutch factor for Optic, but you can 3-0 a team that wins the kickoff classic that has been top two in the world for the past year and a half. You can win tournaments in Optic. I mean, they came to play today. S&D on point, their control was dominant, and they took care of business on Bocage as well. Again, Maybe uh, eight reasons why to a certain extent, but you know they are going to be coming away with so much more confidence going in the major. That is absolutely a massive win for Optic Texas. There was so much talk as well coming into this about like, you know, this is the bad part of the, you know, of the scheduled matches for Optic, especially coming into the major. They have got to absolutely defeat Toronto Ultra in Boston. And, and everyone's, you know, scoffed at that one. All of us included. Look at the entire desk. Not a, I don't think anyone saw this coming. This was huge out of Optic Texas. What a way to get it done. And man, it was insane plays back to back. Shotzi on one. Dashi winning huge individual gunfights when it comes to those AR and AR battles versus Insight. Time and time again, man, they came to play today. Attachment or not, I don't give a, I don't care, man. Like they played so well. That doesn't make a big enough difference. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. We'll let Twitter decide. But like, that was insane. I think the biggest takeaway for me, obviously the Bokash, incredibly close. We know both these teams play it well. It's just we have seen Optic do a decent job over the course of this season so far being playmakers in S&D, but a lot of times still not able to close out those like final moments. They were playmakers again here on Tuscan, but executing consistently making the big plays, sniffing out the rounds they needed, getting the 1v2 clutch from Illy like that is a, a perfect series right there from Optic Tessic, Texas. Again, exactly what they needed. And for the record, I did predict that, by the way. I picked Optic to win. I think the first time we cast him in the kickoff classic, I was like, this is going to be a top two team in the game, like all year long. I haven't yeah. really changed my mind. Like the losses they've had, it's been some unfortunate situations, some lack of vice, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. But I think once they bring it together, this will be a team. We're going to see them in grand finals, I think fairly consistently. And I'll knock on wood just in case, but you go out against Toronto Ultra, one of the best teams in the game, dominate them in a 3-0 performance again. Doesn't get any better than that. Dude, like teamwork was on point. Everyone looked insane. That was a good series for Optic. Now they just have to keep it up. That's all it is. Optic fans have been waiting for a result like this for a really long time. The last time they won a tournament chance was what, back in 2019, back on BO4, back when the Tempest was insane. No, MW. MW? Well, I, well, so Optic, yeah, okay, I suppose. If we're going by like technicalities, but like the players we know to be Optic boys in MW, they got a couple. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting mad. <laughs> right. Anyway, wow. Okay, well, that was a crazy way to close the day out. Desk, are you as hyped as we are? No, Miles, because that was some serious fugues that came out of your mouth earlier, but <laughs> I digress. Big, I digress. Big, big cap. Hey, let's just say this. At the end of the day, Optic Gaming won 3-0, and I'm thinking that the gentlemen on that team agreed that it was part of their fate to win this game. But, yo, nameless. <laughs> when it came to this, Optic, big win over a team like Toronto Ultra? Yeah. I mean... 
that's that's huge. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk specifically about the control. So in the control, I thought they played absolutely amazing. I, I, their offense, it continuously just amazes me how they play that. They're great there. Yeah. On defense, they had multiple clutch nades on B. Clearly, they're timing that as a team. Uh, their defensive holds are very strong there. People are filling at the right times, making the right plays. So they look great there. Uh, but, you know, to talk about the, the GA a little bit, I think uh, that compromises you as a pro player. So I think for Toronto, give them a little bit of grace. They'll probably have a better showing in their next matches going forward. But as soon as they figure that out, they were definitely compromised going forward into, the, into that search and destroy. Optic winning that hard point was big because on paper, let's be completely honest, we all thought, okay, Toronto's going to win a hard point for sure, then Optic's going to win s &D. But when Optic won that hard point, it was kind of like, okay, I feel like Optic's going to take this, and it happened. And you know what? I will say this. Optic looked much more composed than what we had yes. seen from them previously. It definitely looked like they've fixed a lot of their rotational mistakes as well as in-game. We heard in that listen-in, it was Illy kind of making a lot of play calls on the Bowcage hard point. So to a point, Optic has seriously improved since we last saw them. Big time. I think the fact that players just had big individual standouts like Shotzi and whatever, like you saw players like Illy really step up in a big way. Yeah. But on the side of them, Toronto Ultra, I think the boys are going to be fine after this loss. Yeah, I think they're going to be fine. I, I, I do think that in that control on yeah. their offense, there's a couple things that they can fix. Uh, that one time they did not stack the point. You saw Bance was all, all the way at the back truck and he ended up losing that gunfight. Like, you just have to be tighter. You can't make any mistakes on B yeah. when, you, when you get an optimal setup like that. You either go and you stack the point or you must stay alive and finesse when you're yeah. trying to spawn kills. So there's a couple things they can work on there. But like I said, I mean, just the competitor in me, I can't talk about the maps one and two that much simply hey. because he was using an attachment that nobody else had in the entire game, which is definitely going to give you an advantage. Twitter was bumping, I'll tell you that. But what's about to be bumping is his interview. So it'll be with the one and only Shasi for the game fuel post victory spotlight. Shotzi, how you doing today, man? Congrats on the win, first off. And second, all right, let's be completely honest. Going against Toronto yep. Ultra, um, looking at the stats, this team in respawn, they're really good. When you all won a hard point, what was the confidence like for you and your team? Um, our respawns lately have been really good in practice. Uh, you know, we've been really focusing on our map previously, and, uh, you know, it's been showing. And uh, I want to say that I use the wrong attachment because all of our things reset. Yeah, so and Ray told me after map two, so then I switched it. And I just want to apologize to uh, Toronto uh, because I, I literally did not mean to do that. I, I genuinely apologize. But, um, but yeah, uh, GG's to them. I mean, obviously you guys have improved overall as a team. We, we saw it in the way that you played the game, regardless of, you know, the KDs and slang power. Your rotations were on point. You guys were seriously fix that from previously, just kind of putting everything on breaking. And as a team for you guys, I want to know what it was like fixing through those problems and pushing through, upping your game to end up 3 0 Toronto Ultra. Um, I feel like in scrims, we obviously overcome our problems, but when it comes to match time, we have just insane amount of problems. But finally, today we clicked. Uh, I think we're, we were shy to show what we're capable of. And, uh, you know, today showed what uh, we're made of. So, um, yeah. Uh, first off, congratulations on the win, Shotzi. Um, I want to ask you, what separates you guys in control? Because it seems like you guys play Tuscan. You're just a level ahead of everybody on that map, especially when it comes to offense. So what do you think gives you guys that edge? Uh, just stack the point, honestly. Like, <laughs> get our kills, stack the point. Everyone's coming to us. We're going to kill. So uh, I definitely think that's uh, one thing that probably separates us. But, mm. um, I mean, us getting those, you know, uh, just kills are just – allowing us to get the openings to, you know, just create chaos on the map and get, you just get more kills, but... Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right, Shasi, the last weekend before the Optic Major, of course, right? I know the fans out there are excited. You picked up your second win of the year so far. Anything you want to say to the supporters, the believers, anybody out there, man, before we head into the big day? Uh, shout out the Green Wall. Appreciate you guys. Uh, we definitely love you guys. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see you guys at the uh, Optic Major. Yo, Shazi, you killed it today, man. Your KD was incredible. I love your rating, and um, I love the win. Congrats. I was, I was when I got the prediction right, so I feel good about it, man. Good luck to you and your team moving forward, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I will say this, though. At the end of the day, yeah, you know, attachment or not, 
he did he owned up to it and he yeah, apologized I mean, on stream and they still played well in that control obviously you know as well in the series and you know he it wasn't on purpose there's probably people out there who some Toronto fans who think that it was on purpose he probably just had it on like uh, on that account on accident or yeah. a class that he maybe just selected and didn't mean to so uh, from what I've you know interacted with Ant before he's a great guy doesn't have any yeah, intent. Yo. so don't be showing him a kind of hate you on social media you know I respect production for this because they are not letting us slip by I have some choice opinions on this as you can see on your screen but regardless at first I thought they too better. they looked better on hard points yes they better in SND I Okay. Yeah, at first I thought too because it was out on the second, on the next map, right? I yeah. Search destroy, but knowing his character, I just, I, I don't think he would do that. See, I don't know him personally, so I definitely, I can't like attest to him for the way Nameless says. I like for my tweet, for me, it's like, True. dude, there's a giant rectangle at the end of my gun. Like, how do you, I'm killing a little bit faster than I'm used to, but right. again, I digress. This is going to be really fun to see on Reddit as everything unfolds, <laughs> by the way. But let's talk about the game field tactical play of the day. Of. It's going to be none other than Shotzi in a 2v1. Let's go ahead and take a look because this guy was absolutely frying. Absolutely, and we're on board with Illy right now. He does get this first player off the top, and this is a really important round for Opti to go up two to four two in the series. Illy is just trying to stay alive in church here. He knows that that player is going to continue re him. He's going to wait for the pick. He reads the top church push. He goes the stairs and ends up getting the dub. That was just easy reads out of Illy. Yeah, sorry about that. I meant Illy, but Illy popped off. And I will say this, though. Seeing Illy um, being one of the players that really stepped up today in a big That's way what they needed. and just started frying, it was really big, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what they needed. He was the guy that was underperforming in a lot of their series. And Killed in the it. last two, he has stepped it up a big time. So for yeah. them, like, it just seems like that's what sort of flipped the switch and got them going in all the game modes. Right now, let's go ahead and recap the games that happened today because it was definitely a fun one and kind of a fast one, man, with the 3-0 at the end. But the LA Thieves facing off against Paris Legion turned out the way that we expected. Yeah, I mean, this LA Thieves team, they're rolling, dude. Like, in their hard points, <laughs> they are looking unbelievable. They've got now to be seven and one when it comes to hard points. So they're the best hard point team in the game, if not top two with Seattle, right? So looking at this team, I'm expecting them to continuously improve. They have such good AR players, and Draza has just become so comfortable with the SMG. He's a player who's flip-flop between weapons in the past, but now is like a main SMG. He's just been playing so damn good in every series. And then Envoy, who's leading the, the way in terms of hard point KD. Like this is the guy at the kickoff that didn't play that well in, in the respawns. And then now he's just been lighting it up. So I'm loving what I'm seeing out of the LA Thieves. And if they fix their search and destroy, like Drazo was saying, they are really ready for a championship. So, you know, so far so good for LA. They built a really solid roster that is clicking in and out of game. And you can see it's translating. To I love this team. Yeah, big time in Paris. Yeah, the problems are still starting to continue. I mean, this team has been struggling. Yeah, we see flashes of one player popping off at a time and whatnot. But Ali, we need the team to pop off together. We saw what they were time. capable of that in that search and destroy. Sure, John was going on a freaking spree, but everybody else was as well. You know, nobody True. was horrendously negative, and that's what we need from them consistently in every game mode across boards. It needs to translate in hard point. It needs to translate in control. Control was supposed to be a good map mode for them, right. and they lost it. Of course, it wasn't Lana phase. To be fair, they are disgusting, but I don't think all hope is lost for this Paris Legion squad. Now, another game that we saw today was Minnesota versus Atlanta phase, and when it comes to the tempo that phase throws at you, Minnesota, they just couldn't keep up, nameless. Yeah, it was tough for, for Minnesota. I mean, I talked about it a lot earlier. I, I, we'll continue to talk about it with this Minnesota team, but yeah, it's the it's the tempo for them. It's the decision making that have to be quicker. Uh, they're going up against you know the toughest opponent for them, and that's going to be Atlanta Phase. Uh, what we've seen out of Minnesota is they just have to win Game Two, like to extend that series. Yes. If they don't win Game Two, it's just it's going to be impossible for them. They have to be like the best search team in the game in order to be championship caliber. So I think it's just back to the drawing board for this team. They really have to iron out their hard point mistakes. You're not going to be able to get away with it this year. Uh, just you know. Yeah, and both search and destroy wins and stealing a respawn. It's just not going to happen. They get, they got to fix their hard point. You're, you're absolutely right. And on the side of Atlanta phase, I mean, some people saying, you know, we're starting to get more confident. We're starting to get more comfortable. That's scary as hell, Ali, for the simple fact that Atlanta phase is one of the best teams in the game. They're undefeated so far still. And if they get yeah. better, I mean, you know, you got the World Ravens at the top, Toronto <laughs> Ultra, and also Seattle Surge. Yo, phases, they're looking to be king again this year. I mean, we've already seen them get better. BZ and Sim started off a negative KD. I'm sure after this series, they're all positive across the board, and it was sure. an absolute smoke yes. show. So now that they are continuously to push their silly ceilings, wow, yeah. push their ceilings, <laughs> they're basically going to be unstoppable. Right, I was the same way. 
I cannot talk at all. But the last game of the day, seeing, who was it? Sorry, Optic versus Toronto. It just happened on screen, right? Optic walked away with a big 3-0 win in Toronto. I mean, it, it looked rough for them for a second. But you know what? This team, they're good. They're going to yeah. be great. And seeing Optic do better yeah. just means so much more heading into the first major. Now, this is huge for Optic. Like, remember, like, these guys, they lost a series. They're potentially going to be in bottom four and start in loser's bracket. So, I think a sense of urgency was there for Optic. Like, this was a must win for them. And you saw that in their gameplay. And then in this hard point, we talk about at times they make mistakes, things of that nature. Well, there were a couple of hills, like you think back to P4 and Barn on this, where Toronto actually had the back spawns. Bance was on a huge streak. Yeah. But Optic picked up the majority of time because they were able to recognize that and they just stacked point and played back-to-back -back setups. And this team is so individually talented that they're able to do that and get away with it and win that clutch gunfight, even though they have the disadvantageous spawn. So uh, I think that that's a good sign for Optic Texas. And if it. you're an Optic Texas fan, that they're able to get out of these tough spots, because this is a very close map and Optic had had to really grind through it. No. Uh, and that's sort of that, that tight setup thing that they were saying, or the stack the point thing they were saying, that is when they find success, when it's chaos and it works. Yeah, and on the side of Toronto Ultra, like there was a couple of mistakes I wasn't used to seeing this team make. They were playing yeah. incredibly far apart from each other on hard point, which is weird because they are teams so based on teamwork, based on playing out to their trades that that was a little odd for me. I think maybe they just lost their pace at some point. They were getting late on rotations. Optic was out actually out rotating them on P2, which is not something you see every day from Optic Texas. True. But again, props to them for upping their hard point game. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the standings for Optic up their placement just a little bit now. The Things have been crazy so far. And Anna Faze are back on top. It's, it's where they want it to be, right? 4-0, but yeah, they kind of shit. They have one extra game over Seattle Surge. We're going to see how long that lasts. Those two teams are going to be uh, just the rivalry from now on is going to be sexy. But also, Optic Texas moving into the top eight spot, currently 2-2 two and two now. But tomorrow is going to be even better for the simple fact that, take a look at number 11 right now, the New York Subliners. And this is what we were talking about at the beginning of the day, Nameless, how this is a time to perform. Teams like New York, teams like Paris, teams like Minnesota Rocker, there's no more excuses now. They're gonna have to pick things up. Yeah, they have to. They're, they're gonna have to, they have to win out. They have to yeah. win their next two matches. And then even then, like, I think they'll still be hoping to win like a tiebreaker in order to get into the top eight. But I think for New York subliners, it's really just trying to get that win on the board, get some confidence, because more than likely you're starting in losers bracket. So yeah. you just gotta learn the game at this point. You gotta catch up to these teams that are getting ahead of you and try to make something happen at this major. You're right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the points right now, because it matters big time in regards to C Meeting. So let's let's play a little game right now. Atlanta face it would be going against the likes of what like New York or Paris. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I, I suck when it comes WB, to WB. Yeah, it'd be seven or eight. So it'd be Gorillas or Optic at this point. Oh yeah, that's that's gonna be absolutely insane. So um yeah, big Atlanta face at top Imagine again. Imagine Atlanta and Optic round one. <laughs> Yeah. That, that would be hot. That would be hot. That'd be lit. Yeah. <laughs> Round one matchup and winners. I like that. Yeah. Right now, um, Ali, today was a good day. We had three games. Kind of a fast one. We're used to, yeah, you know, really we're nice. used to those long ones from yeah. last week, right? But tomorrow, things are going to heat up even more. I mean, we have four games tomorrow, man. I mean, that thing is going to go the distance all across the board. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for tuning in so far. This is the last and final weekend before the Optic Major, and rightfully so. We see Optic starting to turn things up as well. And for the other teams out there, you see everybody absolutely bringing it from the London Royal Ravens all the way down to even Florida Muneers looking to pick things up. Let's take a look at the schedule to see how things are going to unfold. Like I said, the Florida Muneers are going to have to face off against the Seattle Surge. Now, those young individuals, they're going to have to bring it. But the game field marquee matchup will be the Minnesota Rocker facing off against the Los Angeles Gorillas. Two teams with a ton of potential. Yeah, I would have been super excited for this match, but the problem is Minnesota did not look good today, and they're going to get to LAG team that has also been like a top three hard point team so yeah. far in this game, and their search and destroy looks better. So I'm really heavily leaning towards LAG in our game field marking matchup tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys already know what the deal is. Tomorrow you know the matchups, and um, I can't wait to see it all go down. All of these teams are absolutely gunning, and from what we saw today, we already know that tomorrow is going to be Fuego. So I'm going to thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, same place at the same time. We'll see you guys tomorrow for some more CDL action. You all take it easy.